Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Raw Influence. Today we have Dale, Adrian, and James, who's my brother, on the podcast. Hi everyone. Happy to be here. He's always wanting to cut in, isn't he? Oh. Well, I like to uh, stamp my foot on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So today we are discussing Cambridge Analytica. And on this discussion today of Cambridge Analytica, for those that don't know, it's a uh, it's not a documentary. Is it a documentary or is it a film? Documentary. It's a documentary. <laughs> Currently on Netflix. Yeah. And it's called The Great Hack. It is. So, guys, if you want to find out what the hell we're actually talking about, then probably best to uh, pause the podcast now, go watch The Great Hack, and then come back in after two hours of your life. Yeah, it's two hours, yeah. So what did we think? Two hours, I'll never get back. Oh, Frightening. Uh, Frightening. Really, though? Is it actually frightening, though? Like, you don't expect this by now? Potentially. Well, it, it, yeah, it's what they're going to do with the data. That's that's the thing. And who's got access to the data? I don't think there's too much wrong with it. You don't? I, I think the legality, they should have deleted it, because that's what they should have done. But their actual advertising, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Right, before, yeah. we go, before we go any further, let's actually just make it, make it clear what this actually is. So there is a company called Cambridge Analytica. Was. Was. Great point. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should have stopped and come back by now, so it's not a spoiler anymore. Yeah, true. And the vice president of Cambridge Analytica, funnily enough, is Stephen, is it what, Brennan? 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 Yeah. Yes. Brennan, the, the vice president as well of the USA. No, sorry. Fuck no. my life. Fuck my life. Blonde moment. Oh, shit. You can't say that stuff. Oh, you can. You can. <laughs> it's explicit. Technically, you are blonde. There we go. There we go. Fuck. Throw that in there. I, I don't even know what fuck I said that because I said he was a strategist advisor to the president, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes. Yeah, he was part of the yeah. team that helped. Fucking so vice elected. president. Fuck. Sorry, guys. Blob this moment. This is great because I thought I was coming in unprepared, but clearly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I watched it. Well, I was overly. <laughs> I watched it last week, and in a week, a lot of stuff happened. And you slept. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it weeks ago. So I'm okay, maybe fine. a bit fuzzy. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going with that excuse. Um, <laughs> and in the meantime, so Cambridge Analytica is basically a company. Who was it first used by? W- was it Barack? Oh uh, no! It's used, no, they used it like in, uh, ten, Europe. fifteen years ago. So they used it in like Trinidad. They used it in Argentina. They used it in loads of third you, world com- it, all countries. Is, and then Ted Cruz, and then then it was uh, Brexit, and then also the Brexit campaign, and then also the uh, USA. Prior to that was the USA Trump election, presidential yeah. election for Trump. So where to get started with this? So basically, Cambridge Analytica has been generating a lot of data on, well, everyone actually, not just the USA, if it was Brexit. From various sources, yeah. Yeah, from various sources, and they predict that they've got over 5,000 data points on every single USA citizen without them really knowing about it through Facebook, social media, from what people have uploaded, their marriage status, what their interests are, their hobbies, and built out an entire kind of you know personality profile on them to see where their kind of voting... I would say accuracy lies. So who they're going to be more kind of, you know, associated with. Yeah. Who they'd be more likely to sway to us. They, they targeted people that were technically on the fence. Yeah, exactly. And the ones that are most prone to be able to be able to switch if they hit them with the right social media marketing and that will help uh, push their vote in one direction or another. And then there was just a massive uproar. Then there was that whistleblower, the lady. Um, can't remember her name. I uh, can't remember her Kayser. name. Kayser. I didn't really uh, like her. Her last name was Kayser. You didn't like her? No. She was out for herself. That's my opinion. Uh, I reckon that's why she whistleblowed. She was just like, so there's a thing called whistleblowing is where you basically ran. That's the, <laughs> that's the terminology. You're no, right. See, oh, this is so bad that no one can remember the names. I can remember her name and her last name was Kayser, I believe, which was uh, K-I-S. Um, yeah, I believe. Um, but there was a there was a guy before that who had bright red hair. 
who was the initial face of it who came out mm-hmm. um, and he did the initial information out to the public and the media yeah, yeah. and then Christopher, she came out Christopher, Christopher Wiley or whatever his name was what, yes. and Wiley. you've got Alexander Nix who uh, was the director at the time and there's a few more people on here I just want to find out you had Carol who's the one that pretty much was the one that was putting all the the dots together on everyone funny enough her face and name is not on there which is very weird. What? If you if you just Google that, that she she's her face isn't on there. Every single other person is on there, bar her. Now that's even more spooky. She's a reporter. Would she need to be on there? Well, no. It was in like the cast, people that were involved in that the uh, the great hack cast. That's what I feel like putting in. Nothing. Surely not. Anyway, yeah. so Cambridge Analytica came along, mm. taking people's data via the use of AI, data analytics, and then using it. The argument here is using it in a way that shouldn't be used. That's pretty much what they're saying. Massively linked to companies like Facebook and Britney such Kaiser. That actually took the information in the first place. They use Facebook as a platform. So, you know, there was a phase on Facebook where it's like, what superhero are you? What friend's character are you? What, you, what color are you? And they'd ask you 10 questions. So that's how they were getting your data. But then also within that app, it gave access to your... All of your friend's data as well. Yeah. All your social. It didn't yeah. even have yeah. to sign up to the same app. That's yeah, right. it's just crazy. So that was Brittany Kaiser. She was the former director of business development for Cambridge Analytica. Because let's, let's face it, everyone has that one friend or family member that just signs up to every single game on Facebook and tries oh, to add you. Oh, what's that stupid gem game? And you just constantly get invites. You're like, no, I've got a fucking life. <laughs> like, get away. Yeah, there were so many, so many weird Facebook games that, yeah, family members would try to sign you up to and they'd get points or something like that. There'd be some incentive for them to try to invite their friends. So there'd be someone in your friends list that would have done it. Yep. Basically. In which case, everyone's data just. And then you fuck. Yeah. So the question is, how do they then get all the other people's data? They're because just... of by that one person agreeing to sign it, it links automatically to mm-hmm. the friends. Okay. And what data is immediately available? Marriage status, um, photographs, images. I'm pretty sure mine's mine's just not true. I just decided to not input the right information. I think mine says I went to the school of e nerds. It's all like public that. anyway because yeah, it is, yeah. it's all there. So I I half think it's wrong, but on the other side, I also think the data is there to be used. So okay, I I, I agree that the data is there to be used, and you pretty much agree to that in all of the terms and conditions and everything mm. else that's been signed up to it, which no it, one reads. Yeah, no one does no. read it. No one does read it. No one knows no where the data read. is really going. I think the the main argument here is 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 the whole uh, democracy of whether or not pushing information out there which you know to be false on your opponent to sway that vote to go to someone else is yeah 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 you've so the, gone so the votes are the rigged. Def- the votes are rigged, but then again, mm. outside of Cambridge it, Analytica, it was a free, it was a free democratic uh, election. Technically, yeah, they just it's people using Facebook yeah, but when and then cite- getting swayed by adverts. So That's they're right. using mm. their advertising campaigns, which every single political party is like, used prior. You're not nobody's having to go at Kellogg's for like using Tony the Tiger. That's what I would compare it to. Exactly. Like he is an advertising tool to sway people to buy Frosties. Yeah. Yes. So why can't, if I was running for president and that was an option to me, I would use it, hands down. But no one's going to Trump and saying that you shouldn't have worked with him. No one's saying that. No, it, no one's, no, because he probably wouldn't know where that data is coming from. He's just said, I would like some data and I want you to help me win the election. So that's pretty much what. Well, the interesting fact is, is their win rate is like 100%. They're paying like a million pounds a day for Facebook ads. It's crazy. That's strong. <laughs> Facebook accounting game. Yes. Yes. Election run up time. One million a day. Yeah, the account manager on that account must have been rubbing his hands like, oh, commission day for me. <laughs> I tell you, you got to watch. Yeah, when, when you're watching it, you've got to realize that it sounds a little bit tin foil hatty, but it's, it's there. It's something that people have admitted to. 
it also mentions later on in the the documentary again spoilers for anyone that hasn't watched it but you should have by now um about russia um and their advertising and how it affected the the us um elections because everyone says that russia affected it but it didn't really go into detail on any mainstream news outlet mm. they just oh they they were involved they were involved with bringing yeah. it it's because they were doing adverts for uh, Black Lives Matter group um, and also Blue Lives Matter group, um, things like that, for instance, and getting the turmoil, um, getting people to click on the adverts, go to certain protests um, against political candidates right, um, yeah. that they're associated with, mm. um, basically turn the country against each they're other. They're basically getting the white supremacists and Black Lives Matter to turn up at the same place at the same time. And yeah. they knew they were going to be at each other. Yeah. And then political parties the could use it. Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked, isn't it? The whole political scene. <laughs> but then, like, the Put your the tinfoil day, hat on there. It is so fucked. But at the end of the day, yeah, so what, Russia got involved, but then who told? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. So this whole thing, it, it, this is not a conspiracy, by the way, guys. This was in court. The company got shut down. And then they've just restarted the company. Um, what is it called now? It's Emma Data, is it? Emma Data, yeah. Em, em, it's almost like Emerald, em, Emma Data. Yeah. But it's, it, what, that's because it was targeted and somebody asked for it. But what happens if they decide, the governments decide to, the CIA or people of, you know, the intelligence organizations decide to approach them and say, well, we'll fund it but you can't tell anybody about the funding and we want you to target other countries and other political leaders. They do that. I was going to say... Conspiracy. To <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but but uh, it's, it's, it's... So is, can, we, can we just openly say that this debate is then uh, we've all got one agreement here that democracy is now gone? Well, no, it's not that, because um, those people still have free will to vote. Yeah, basically. Whether they chose to listen to an advert or not, I can get hit with Kellogg's adverts every single day. But he doesn't know like, my For the day, rest though. of my life, but, but if I choose to buy them, that's not yeah. <laughs> but the psychological profiling works if you actually target somebody and keep filtering information to them well, after they wouldn't a while. use it if it didn't work well well that's right but they don't you end up with well this is just a, a political uh, a game to get somebody into power what happens if they skew the information for other uh, things that I you think the main about. problem is is that people are using Facebook to get their news well, this well, is yes, yeah, that's how they so, connect. So, and you know what it is? Those were the this people is... that voted for Brexit. Yeah, you went there. James, James oh, went, went there. there. Yeah, there's a bunch of people that just figured out technology. I mean, news outlets in the best of times now <laughs> connected uh, on Facebook to Susan. No longer unbiased. Everyone is biased. It's either you're right or left. But if you're getting your news from Facebook, then all right. Let's be honest. How many people have got a Facebook message saying? As of tomorrow, Facebook can now use your data for X, Y, and Z unless you put it as your status, and then they don't have the right to. How many people? Share. Share this message. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> 15 Fucking people. chain message. Come what? on. Come on. Like, chain messages. I'm pretty sure oh. someone's targeting my dad because like, <laughs> the, amount of, <laughs> like, <laughs> the amount of remain stuff like he shares on a daily basis. Is he running for president? Like, <laughs> no, but he's supporting remain. They're like, if we hit him, he'll share it to his 400 friends. Yeah, like, I think of how many data he's points worth he's it. got. Oh, right. And then they're like, his influence on his 400 friends. And they go, hmm, mm. that guy's got a brain. So, that... <laughs> oh, you went there. <laughs> it, I got to admit, it is pretty mental. But that's, do you know what? You're not the first person to bring it up. I was listening to um, Andy Frizzella's podcast, who's an absolute epic businessman. Um, I'll give him a plug, no problem. He owns First Form. And um, I think he's like well over 500 M, absolutely epic. And um, when you're looking at the overall scheme of what he was talking about, he was like, this is the problem. People are reading fake news. Hmm. You know, people are reading news that is the, the, the reporters go like, oh, I need to get, I need to get a promotion. I need to get, I need to get the highest one out there. And then they, they just write whatever the, whatever the fuck they basically it's want. They've, bait, they've always it? got an angle. It's fucking YouTube. Every reporter it's... has an angle. There's, there's literally no, Neutral news. I was watching Joe Rogan, and he brought up a very good point. The, the only unbiased good reporting and journalism now is for, for paid content. So if you're getting the New York Times or 
some a New York Journal or something similar to that, where there's actual journalism, everything else is clickbait. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. it will be. It's now become YouTube. You yeah. see it all the time, don't you? Like, like, it just fucks me up. It's true though. Like, if you're sitting there, okay. So the, the idea here is, is that so basically in the old days when voting happened, you was influenced by the party, the yes. political party, and that political was the, broadcasting you know, network. The, you know, they'll knock on your door BBC. and they would say that you should be voting for us because of X, Y, and Z. You know, they still don't do what they say they're going to do when they knock on the door. Mm. But that, so that's my point. So just because people are analysing the data and they're like, oh, I, I, I don't agree with what this person's doing. It's not true. It's, it's just fake news. It's just a picture mm. that says why Hillary Clinton is a... Hillary Clinton is a is basically a liar and should be in jail and all the rest of it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's stuff that Trump has done also. Well, it was but... Hillary the crook, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Their, uh, their Great campaign. marketing. Great marketing. Also and they focused clicking. on a lot of the videos of uh, that one time she choked on stage. She had the, the coughing right, kind yeah. of fit and mm. she needed the water and they were saying they were trying to make out it was because she was weak as a leader and wasn't Absolute able to answer questions. Um, her health was poor. Uh, they tried to go down all of these crazy angles just from one little coughing episode on a stage. They did it with Theresa May, actually. And we don't, we, we don't want a weak president. That's right. Mm-mm. You're mum with a shit haircut. <laughs> 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 we can't talk. We've got Boris. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> I thought he was on about Trump, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the idea here is then is that, is that, you know, democracy so far gone now that it doesn't exist. I don't, I don't believe in politics anymore. Like, that you look at you look at the Brexit politics and the politics. Main... Yeah, but what it's always is... going to be politics. It's always just going to be a bunch of people angling for that position of power to be able sure. to bring in things that they wanted to bring in. The I problem think... now is no one. There's no discussion. It's my point, their point. There's no. Yeah, there's no mid ground. There is no mid ground. Hmm. It it needs. We need a whole new political system. Genuinely, we need. A, it, it can't get to the point now where someone says, "Oh yeah." There's going to be an extra 30,000 police officers walking the streets when I get in because it's going to make the country a safer place. And it does not happen. Bearing in mind that they've lost over 70,000 or something. But yeah. And Most James, James would know as, a, as an ex copper. Yeah, maybe not the exact figures, but yeah, it's a lot of drop off. Um, did, did, lost did, a lot of experience. Did any of, the, um, did any of the prime ministers whilst you was, how long was you a police officer for? Uh, 10 years. And in, in any time when a prime minister came in and they said that there will be safer streets and everything else and the promises they made, did any of that actually come through to the forces? Well, no. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> whenever they were doing it, they were going on about community policing, but that would take away money from other places anyway. And then community policing became unfashionable. So then they started removing all of the community policing, neighbourhood teams, uh, whole police stations getting sold off because the... Obviously, the uh, well, they cut their budget. They were all in they? debt, so yeah, they kept they had to sell off what they had because of the budget cuts. Yeah, uh, pay freeze. Uh, I believe that lasted eight or so years before they just recently announced that they were going to give a slight pay increase there. Because um, normally everyone's money raises every year, doesn't it, to kind of yeah. help with the rising tax, but never really. And uh, yeah, it just got frozen, it's just in place. And, and there they got the police, didn't they? So, yeah, you get a lot of people that were in it for a long career and then they end up getting dropped off, um, go and finding better things that they could be doing with their time. Then you lose the experience. The new ones all come in. Bright eye, bushy tail. I think that they're going to help out a lot. And then uh, they've got no experience to draw from. But I don't know how we ended up uh, going down that route and uh, changing the, the whole political system in the UK based on uh, one company playing around with their data. But the question in begs then, is it just that one company? Is it just that one that's been caught? If they're doing it, there must be other people doing it. I mean, what a smart well, guy. You've got to admit, hands down, sure. Nick. Oh, yeah, they made a business out of it. Nick is a smart guy. He was mm-hmm. saying that it was going to be over a billion in valuation. I mean, you can't go wrong. Political party is going to be chewing his arm off. Even now, when the next election comes, you watch. He will be somewhat involved. Why? Because he's got a track record. He managed to sort Brexit. It's a circus. They, well, um, intelligence they mix organizations with, isn't it? would be awesome. So, are we saying they? that if Cambridge Analytica was on the Remain team side, that we would be remaining? Yeah. More than likely. So, what Cambridge Analytica, then, whoever they partner, partner with, decides what's going on in the whole political party? 
It's because I um, think within reason, if it's if it's close to sort of fifty fifty or in the case fifty two forty eight, I think they can maybe make a marginal percentage point or two. But I don't think they're not going to move a vote by five ten percent. No, they they did it in. Well, they did. Uh, where was one of the places the that you were talking about earlier? It the depends states. how long they do it for. Yeah, but I mean, so then like, you win more seats, for example, in the UK if you did it on, on different areas. I mean, Ted Cruz, he was already the senator for Texas, so they worked with him, but he got in the second term. Um, then Trump, Trump's famous as well. I think that helped him. He had his own money for his own campaign yeah. in the first place. Uh, yeah, but don't forget, though, that Hillary Clinton's monetary value in her campaign running was something ridiculously higher than his. He was a small portion in comparison to her. They've been planning for ages. The no one likes her, though. <laughs> I think that's a big problem for the Democrats, hmm. that no one liked her. Yeah. I just... Uh, this Steve Bannon guy that keeps propping up is... Uh, it's becoming interesting because he was the one that was involved with the exiled Chinese billionaire and then the former chief executive to the Trump campaign. Mm. So interesting one to keep an eye out. I wonder if he drops off the list and disappears somewhere. These these podcasts are turning real kind of conspiracy of what's going on. But this is factual, actually. Cambridge Analytica is now gone. Cambridge Analytica did work on the Trump campaign. Cambridge Analytica did work on the Brexit campaign. Um, the, the discussion here is whether or not what they did... Wasn't was Steve Cannon the um, Steve Banner? Banner wasn't he di- one of the directors on? on um, yes, he was. Analytical. He was the vice. I Cambridge think he was the vice analytical. chairman or yeah. something along yeah. those lines. He came down this good. So that's he was like, oh yeah, I, I, I've got a company that can help yeah, with yeah. this Trump. Let's yeah. go. Um, I don't blame him. The interesting part here is, is I don't think it. I don't think it is illegal to use because the data is there and we've all agreed to it. But they, they kept the data. That was illegal. That yes, was really illegal, that and that's what they got found guilty data. of in yeah, the court, fine. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but it was also highlighted that the the law system basically just isn't in place to be able to actually punish any of the other stuff that they've done. No. So it kind of needed, in typical fashion, after the horse was bolted, for the country to basically try to come up with some kind of laws to cover future expected potential crimes the, the point the, well, the thing uh, here is uh, uh, okay uh, other than that then other than keeping the data did they do anything wrong that's an interesting question some people argue that ethically they did yeah me personally i, I couldn't care less uh, you, you, but ethically is a big thing because you could then say well the people that were saying that you know if we leave the uh, european union and all the rest of it then we'd get x we'll get this we'll get that and everyone's starting to backtrack on that now so the whole of politics is unethical because yeah. if they make a promise to someone and they don't achieve it then the whole thing is unethical i think it's sure. bullshit i think the whole political system shit it just needs to have if you're going to say something on your kind of like consensus of this is what we're going to achieve and i bring this up all the time if if, if, if that's on there to say that this is what we'll achieve if we get elected. That then needs to go to three different external auditors that go, actually, yes, with the budget that they have, that is achievable on a scale of one to ten. And each different one, all three different independent ones, need to give a rating on that. And if it's above a seven, it can make the consensus of what you're saying. If not, then it's not feasible and it's just piss and vinegar and it should not be in your consensus. And that's what people are voting for. People are looking at that going, oh, yes. We will be on the moon in 2025 if I'm in power. Hmm. Based on what? Based on my opinion. Yeah. And that is the overall issue. But the, the interesting thing is, is people are reading news sources from bullshit places. Yeah. What? So a Facebook addict calls Hillary, Hillary a crook. Well, it's now true because, oh, because Facebook says it's true. Yeah, it's essentially fired at you so many times. That's right. That that's, it. that's it. You take it in subconsciously. Almost like subliminal it, messaging. It exactly. Is. But then subliminal messaging is also illegal for subliminal advertisement. So that's when something's actually, you're actually physically a, hidden in the thing in like a brief moment of a flash people or something. People are choosing like that. that's to click it. No, it is, it is illegal. Things. You have to tell people that you have subliminal messaging in there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, through an image or background yeah. hidden noise, etc. But what they were doing was not that. 
it was just hammering you with advertising, which is what every other company does, mm. much like Dale said earlier with Kellogg. The effectiveness of subliminal advertising is still up for debate as it's been illegal in UK, America and Australia since 1958. Mm-hmm. The use of by the use uh, by advertisers images and sounds to influence consumers responses without their being consciously aware of it. Well, to be fair, Facebook is done based on impressions. So just because it's on your screen doesn't mean you're consciously aware of it, especially at all times as well. So the more that you're hit with that information, that's right. The more likely it's going to be subconscious. So you know, it's, it's, it's exactly. getting to the point now where um, it kind of gets to that level of where how how far do we how far do we go on subliminal messages? Well, that's like trying to argue that a billboard on the side of the road is subliminal just because you drive that's past right. it every day. Mm. Yeah. That's true. Just because you're just not hit with it and you're flying through your news feed every day and you see the same little thing on the side. You don't pay conscious attention to it, but your subconscious does. Okay, so but then if you but saw... it's not a hidden message. It's right there. That's right. This is what I'm getting at. It, it's, it's not subliminal in the sense that they're arguing where it's actually hidden. No, correct. Yes, sound. Okay, so it didn't flash the effect an image is the same. within an advert for something I mean, else. My girlfriend looks at like gardening stuff. No matter how much ads I get hit for for plant pots, I'm not going to buy one. Exactly. Me and Dale are like, we're on the same Wi Fi. I'm not going to buy a plant pot. <laughs> I know, but the target is. <laughs> yeah, you, you're completely on it, mate. Like, yeah. like I said, you could get smashed with the same advertising mm. all the time. It's still your individual choice at the end of the day. The targeting's not to you, though. The targeting's no. not to your girlfriend. Yeah. Well, let, let's say, like, those shit trading ads on youtube they can tell me that they're going to train me every single day but, but i'm not going to buy but it. you're not interested <laughs> in it but what what about if yeah. they targeted poker that would pique your interest i get targeted that's something that you're interested time, in but well, yeah that's because of all your data points I, right, let's not talk over each other because otherwise when mm-hmm. no one listening to the podcast will actually hear so let's just take it in turns yeah yeah cool. so i know that what sites i want to play on Another site can advertise, but I don't want to play on it because I'm, I'm playing on this site. But you might look at the other site just to form an opinion of it. Like you did with Ty Lopez, and then all of a sudden his ads kept on coming, yep. and then you got interested. It's Good the same one. thing. It is the same thing because we end up knowing who Ty Lopez is, but we switch off to it because... We mm. keep seeing that advert, advert, advert. And then by the 12th one, you're like, dude, this guy's not going anywhere. Oh, I need to know who, this is, who he is. And you're like, oh, affiliate yeah. marketing. And then you think, actually, let's have a look into more and what he's doing. Well, that was quite cool, he said. And then before you know it, you actually start liking him. And that's probably the same thing mm. with what happened with these people mm. that were debating whether or not they agree with what Hillary is. The first picture, they're like, oh, what a load of rubbish. Second one, third one, fourth one, different sources, different areas, different sightings. Uh, a lot of people there must are be some truth about it, yeah. A lot of people are talking about this. It's not just one source. What's going on? You're only talking thousands of times. It's going to make a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I I, I agree, but I still didn't buy anything from Thailand. <laughs> still wouldn't buy any plant pots. <laughs> Strong will. Strong, Strong will. will. The other arguments is that like, Okay, how positive could it be for you? Because all of these things are, we're, we're, we're focusing on the negative here, but there's so many positives. Yeah, it found me a chair that I needed. Yeah. Because uh, Jukes broke one. Because he's fucking it. He's, he's a heifer. <laughs> he breaks everything, this guy. Man, you keep going in on Jukes on all of these podcasts, man. Yeah. Well, it was you last time, wasn't it? Every week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give him a shout out he's, it's alright he, because the more I advertise him he pays me is he? <laughs> <laughs> he'll hold you to that no worry Jukes is um, big shout out to Jukes he's literally climbing uh, Ben Nevis in a, a full suit of Roman armour yeah on hats Saturday off. hats off hats to off him them. yeah absolutely helmets off to him <laughs> he's legend like, he's helmet <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. uh, he will be thinking that himself afterwards. He said this morning it was a bad decision buying that Roman suit, thinking that he could climb up Ben Nevis. All thanks to uh, Jason Fox from uh, the ex SAS Marine from SAS Who Dares Wins. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> I can yeah, he set him a personal challenge, and yeah, instead of using the money for charity, 
he's uh, thrown it into getting a Roman set of armour purely to <laughs> yeah. prove that he could do it in the armour. I tell you what, he's got to get a lot of chafe in. So what's what's our kind of outcome with this whole, obviously we'll get with Ben Nevis coming around the corner, that's awesome. Let's talk about Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge mm-hmm. Analytica, they did all this data mining, they've then provided that to, you know, politicians, presidents, and where are we going with that final? So I think it's one to watch, guys. If you're seriously interested in how your data has been collected and how it's been used with your permissions through social media, then you definitely need to just be aware of where that data is going and also aware of what news you're reading and taking on board. Because, um, again, like I said, I'm not the only one. Andy Frizzella points it out that people are reading news now from locations that just aren't, aren't viable. You know, you've got you've got to remember that there's a lot of places now where news is skewed, hmm. it's twisted, depending if they're left or right, and you have to come up with your own decision yourself now, which is not how it used to be. No, you always had to come up with a decision yourself anyway. No, but it used to be very black and white. Like what was said is what what used to happen. I'm assuming on paper, or everyone assumed that. You can look back through the whole of history, and it's always been grey when it comes but when to you politics. Read, when you read the news and you were a kid, Big A, you must have gone, huh, trusted source. You didn't ever question that information, did you? No. No. We got most of our news from the, obviously, from the television, BBC, and things like that. But uh, And then you read the papers, but then the papers start skewing because of their political mm. uh, agenda. But. Mm. People are stopping using Facebook. I mean, uh, Elon Musk has deleted his company profile off of um, off of Facebook. Really? So, yeah. So things like that. People. I didn't uh, know that. I did not know that. I'm pretty sure he's just a big Twitter user, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, he's very sensitive. Well, I, the thing is with uh, um, Cambridge Analytica, they've been caught out. Says so the car batteries. <laughs> They'll throw that one in there. Elon, God, Musk. Elon Musk is thinking Tesla's going on fire, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, just not. But, you go with that. but <laughs> they, like they've it. been caught out. What about other companies or organizations out there that are doing it? Not necessarily just by Facebook, but what about your mobile phone? Getting data from your mobile phone. They're listening. They're listening. They're yeah, listening. But who cares right anymore? Now. Well, that's the world we're I going know. towards. Yeah, but they're building huge profiles. They're finding out you. They're finding out where you are, your data, who you're talking to, and it's all information out there. They're all you're not forced it. to use the phone. They can have it. You're they not forced to use the phone. If it sorts me out with whatever. Yeah, I but need, where do your where do your rights go? Just click on my phone and know you, about you're it. ending up as I, it's okay to give all your information out there. Yeah, and and it's personal. A lot of it's personal, and it's your information. Why should somebody else have it? Access it and use it potentially against you. But as a you're just you mean. Sorry? As a commodity. So essentially we're creating people as commodities. Yeah, you're just a, a, an object now. You've got no human rights. But this is your choice. This is your choice. You're you're deciding to use an but, iPhone. But who says they can take my data just because I want to use a phone and call somebody? Because you t- sign the terms and conditions. Oh, it's back to that again, isn't it? Exactly. I'm still not going to buy the flower pot, though. Someone didn't it's... read their terms and conditions. Go back to a 3310 where they you're mm. off, the, off, the, off the network. You can use phones. Your battery will last for about a week. You can drop it in a pond and it will still work. And you can play snakes. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the meaning of life. All, no, all in a nutshell there. Soon you'll have a if you want a phone <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> yeah, use a brick. I'll get a pigeon carrier pigeon just let it take a message off to but me. it's true you can go offline if you wanted to technically there's no way of de- getting back the data that's already gone though and that's no. another point that was raised by it yes the thing is is you don't think that your data on yourself is valuable so you're like well i don't care that's because i've got a very boring life in comparison to whatever whoever they're targeting yeah but that's the, that's probably the that's probably the people that they are targeting very interesting. And it's an interesting point of view on it, that's for sure. You buy your clothes? Yeah. 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 You buy stuff? Yeah. Stuff. You buy, buy food? Stuff. Like I said, if it helps me, if it helps me at any point in time with whatever I need, then 
I'm fine with that. The the part that I don't agree with is when they use it uh, to negatively skew uh, other people's views on something. So say I started running for a political office and then all of that negativity that comes with it, they start doing advertising campaigns that are all just negative stuff. That That's just twisted everything. So what's the difference between that and online trolling? <laughs> there's, there's no fucking difference, is there? It's online Not trolling. Really. It's just someone sitting there in it, on their computer or their phone. Just go, kill yourself. Oh, you're ugly, kill yourself. Ugliest thing I've ever seen. Oh. And they're sitting there tucking into a fucking... And uh, over time, I mean, that can affect burger. people. That's a serious issue. It, it is. is. It is. That's why I signed that UK petition. Would I be affected by it? No. It's because you're a unit. I just... <laughs> <laughs> because it's you. I said no, because he's a unit. Yeah. Why doesn't it bother you? Online trolling, surely. That's what I talked about in the last podcast. I talk about it quite a bit. I don't care about those people's opinions at all. Uh, One million people follow you on social tomorrow. They're all messaging you. I that, seriously, I see a negative message. I just go, okay, cool, delete. Like that's me because I've learned to be like that over time. I, I don't know conditioning, whatever it is, but. You can't let people just kind of drag you down like that. Mm, it's true. You know that they're sitting there doing something equally boring with their lives. They got nothing, and to they're do. not happy. And everyone's got their own problems. Yeah. And they decided to use that time in an unproductive manner by just sending an abusive message to someone else. Mm. What a massive waste of time! If you could say one thing to a snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> See, we- <laughs> <laughs> there are some sensitive people out there. There are snowflakes for those that don't know. Oh, also what we call trolls. So if you no, <laughs> no, snowflakes are just people that are easily offended. Offended, yeah, mm. yeah, targeted by said trolls. Okay, trolls and snowflakes. So if you had something to say to a troll right now, what would be your one line of advice? Get a fucking life. <laughs> and to a snowflake, what would you say? Something encouraging, like believe in yourself. I love that. That was nice. I would have gone a different that was direction. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could be harsh, but like obviously, that, then I'm just adding to the trolling. That's nice. That's really nice. Believe in yourself. Be confident in yourself. Build up yourself. Spend time with people that also make you feel the same way. Don't drag you down. Oh man! From the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Feel like from the round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Very nice. That's 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 true nature. That's what that's what we should be like. But we don't. We, we're not like that, are we? As people, we we naturally judge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's easy to look at the negativity on uh, from first impressions, etc. That way, he's just a good person, isn't he? <laughs> I reckon we should do that as we go. go on. What's your advice to a snowflake and a troll? All right, troll first. Yeah, troll. A troll would be the same, like get a lie. Yeah. No, come on, you can't you, know, you can't no, use the no, same. That's no, just copying out. No, that, out. that's what I would say to the troll, but the snowflake, I would have said something like grow a pair or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Just, <laughs> you can't You're part of the problem, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say anything in the first place. That's, that's trolling by saying grow a pair. No, I wouldn't say anything like negative to begin with. Like, oh, but at the end, you'd be like, a fucking I'm not a troll. I won't get involved with it, to be honest. But come on, where, where's wisdom? Life hits you in the face, and you got you got you got to sit down with a troll, opening advice to a troll. What are you gaining from it? I'm not. I'm just hurting inside. I need to vent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a troll. Yeah. Who, who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> so Therap- it's a snow- therapy session coming out. Yeah. If it's a snowflake, then you'd say maybe, like, why do you care what that person thinks? Yeah. Sensitive people, though. I think you just have to desensitize, desensitize yourself to that sort of thing online. It's okay for the average person, but I mean, like yourself with a large social following, it's different because you do get it. So yeah, it's... constantly. Yeah, you can't. You, I, I'm, I'm good. I get a lot. You get used to it, right? It used to bother you a lot more than it does now. That's for sure. It does. Yeah, I, I used to get maybe you know the odd hate message here and there from um, you know whispers from nobodies out there, and um, yeah, I used to listen to it. I used to listen to it, and then a lot of people send me nice messages. 
and then the nice messages outweigh the small negatives. And again, a lot of it just comes down to jealousy. And I think when you understand why they're doing it, when they're like struggling or whatever in their their life, then I I kind of understand that a bit more. But I don't think that I would ever be that person to do that because I've never done it myself. Um, so my advice to trolls is before you speak make sure you know exactly who you're talking to mm. on a face-to-face level rather than what you've seen or perceived online um, that's probably what i would say because you take the likes of conor mcgregor who is very in your face very cocky and very up himself he's a showman that From is how his, he's portrayed. That yeah, is how yeah, he's sure. portrayed, but that's not who he is. Who he is, he's a very down to earth person, actually, that helps a lot of people in his local community, that looks after his family, and is a very good man. However, that's not what his role is. So, and to a snowflake, I would probably say, um, yeah, sure, geez. I would probably say spend time with the people that actually matter to you rather than someone on the other end of the. You know, other end of the, you know, usually I'm a bit funny. It's actually people from a, a lot of the hate, I would say, from th- third world countries, um, majority of the time, I would say, or school bicker. So I would probably say that you, you can't really know why they're coming from that angle. They're obviously, again, they're either in pain in their life, they're at a struggle point, or they have too much free time, or uh, they're not focused on themselves. Whereas for, 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 you know, for someone that's conscious about that, I would probably say, make sure you focus on yourself, your drive, your goals, your true vision to yourself, because whatever that other person says will never have any effect on how successful that you are at what you're truly passionate about. That's what I would say to a snowflake. Fine, and let's, let's hear from the big eight, because we're all quite young. So well, no, we absolutely. I, I totally agree with what you, everybody said. Uh, everybody's got issues. We got the issues. Some people, and you got them too. Some people won't acknowledge they have issues, and so they end up with anger and frustration inside. And what they do is they vent it towards other people through a social media where they've got no recourse because it's safe for them to sit in a bedroom and and go on the internet and call somebody all the names and do nasty things. But what they're not doing is actually dealing with their own issues. So. I agree with you. Talk to people around you who are important, but they bottle it all up. It's as if they're in their own little world and that they're never going to change it. Uh, and so they vent it onto other people. It's easy for me to call you this name, that name, another, because you don't know who I am, which is why when you look at Col- Colin McGregor, that uh, that you have to know the person. Conor McGregor. Or Connor. 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 <laughs> Who's Connor? Oh, Connie. He's- oh, Connie. Yeah, she's... But, um, yeah, so you, you, you need to get out and stop playing on these games and, and Facebooking people and Twittering. They, they end up with this secular little world where, where now people don't talk to each other, they don't go out, they, they don't communicate, they do it on texting. They, they, it's easier to text. And, and so you have no, no communication, you know, except with other people who hate. And you just, it's just a vicious circle all the time. So you'd recommend more of the the human experience? Yes, you have to. Um, Because the internet was a great thing. When the internet came 30 years ago, when I was born, we didn't have phones, as I've told you before. And they were a novelty, and everybody had them. And now everybody's got at least one, if not two or three in a drawer somewhere. And it's everybody's walking around with it in their hand. Like, they can't do anything without this bloody phone in their hand. It's because they can't. Of course it can't. Get a life. Put the damn thing down. It doesn't end because somebody hasn't texted you within 10 minutes, you know? But they, Is that they, your advice to snowflakes? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so, they, so what happens? Put the phone down and walk away right now. I'd have to text to like find out what then. snowflake meant. You know? but, and if anyone does want to actually get out, then overwatch.charity. Sign yourself up to a mission with us. And you can come and join us on one of our adventures like we did in Ben Nevis. We've got another couple of awesome mountain climbs going on in the UK. And you feel free to join us in some places where there is not phone signal and we have to talk. It's, uh, it's a great venture and, um, sorry, adventure. And um, we'll be um, raising money for Overwatch charity, which is to help get rid of single use plastic and also look after, um, you know, uh, con- con- the environment. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. True. of course those who aren't prepared to do a massive walk up a very, very uh, high mountain very high mountain uh, <laughs> in the pool, there's a lot right. of beach cleans and things like that as well so i would say uh, the beach more clean. level pegged um the beach clean was really tiring over the climb even level uh, ground was uh, unlevel yeah, yeah five ground. miles of walking on the beach yeah yeah pebbles. at least it's, yeah it's all one level yeah but it's not Playing field, when yeah. you push it like pushes the gravel away and you're like fuck that was really tiresome all right all right, well, we'll be able to compare properly when you've done no business. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously when you've done no business. Well, yeah, maybe sometime in the future. Okay, so where are we going with this conversation? Cambridge Analytica, cool company, not cool. Technically cool. Technically criminals. Technically criminals, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, they can't be that bad if they manage to get another company set up. Well, they had to close their current company, so that's a pretty bad sign. No, oh, strategic That'll be move, the negative right? Press, no, one, one, new, one thing about that: no PR company would work with Cambridge Analytica when they was going through their crisis, which is what PR for. Yeah, they thought they would get taken down with them. That was how strong the movement was, which was pretty impressive, I think. I think they're smart. I think they're real smart. I think oh, building yeah. a social profile, if anything, is probably better for the nation if it was used in a good manner. Hmm. If that was used in a good manner for social events and uh, organising places where people may need help or, you know, for good causes. Then that'd be great Overwatch. Decide, so yeah. What is a good manner? A good manner. Um, people that um, maybe come from a lower income class background that need assistance with chores and tasks and then advertising to, the, to an area of where people want to assist those people because they've built a social profile matching the two together and then get them to organize stuff. I'm just going to say, like, you could use that data in so many different ways than for political gain of where someone's in power and it's all done through, well, I'm not saying all of it's done, but majority of it is done through kind of false information just like what happened, we've both been hit. We got hit with Brexit, and they've now hit with Trump in, in the USA. You know, and I'm pretty sure that um, Cambridge Analytica or, or uh, what's it called, Emma Emerald, Emma it? Data, Emma, Emma Data, Data yeah. will be working with Dan Balzerian when he goes for his presidential election runnings. Absolutely. The only problem is what you just mentioned is there's no money in that. Well, that's the, not that's that you're the, aware of. What in getting people to. Help volunteer. volunteer. Help the, well, the, the, true. if the well, government's no got behind that. it, well, they won't, will they? Well, they could do our job and save the planet. And if that was the case, if they're going to pay for that, they might as well just pay to build, like, or just pay a social worker. True. You spend yeah. a million a day in advertisement. More yeah. money to the NHS. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, the police force. So, <sighs> the the only people thing. that are going to pay you to use it are people that need an edge. To, to make something of themselves or make more money. Yeah, very true. So where do we go with this then? Like, do we believe that politics, understanding what we now know about Cambridge Analytica and how that has uh, made massive changes to uh, the future of the, the well, British economy, English economy, what will be, and also to the US, do we think that politics are actually going to change over the next 10 to 20 years? As generations start coming up, surely we've got to start realising that what we're saying, what they're saying to us, doesn't actually happen. 15 or, years, though, the, the way we're expanding technologically, you won't be able to recognise a lot of stuff. No. Go 15 years back, there's so many things that we didn't have. It's Instagram, things like that. True. Just didn't have that capability. I, I remember sitting in like, the room that we had Trying to use dial up. I remember to that. get on the and PC. You just think, oh, maybe not so tuneful, but yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It was like a screeching noise. And then you, yeah. you get mum shouting up the stairs, Are you on the internet? Because I'm trying to have a phone call. And yeah. it cuts out. Exactly. Yeah. One or the other. <laughs> That's <laughs> mental. Uh, There's people these days like shares on the media team and stuff. She, she, she won't know about those kind of problems. No. No. Like, you know, a bunch of bunch of people these days that just don't understand it, how difficult it was but going back to the point te technology is going to move so far forward in the next 15 years so again if it's used in politics the same way it's used now like you we won't be even able know. to recognize it the same way uh, that's the same as artificial intelligence isn't it that's getting so advanced now that 
that will be just pulling all information from every possible computer it can and targeting people. So there will be a political Until agenda. Until Skynet realises that yeah. we're the threat and wipes us out. Yeah. It's an interesting point of view. The um, people that work for Cambridge Analytica, did they hire the people who were working for them using the analytic data to target people? Oh, uh, uh, catch twenty two. <laughs> Mind fuck. Because I mean, the, the the woman that came forward on the documentary, she was quite vulnerable at the time. Hmm. I think she was quite a political activist to start with. She was, wasn't yeah. she? And then uh, she was having monetary problems with her family, and they had That's just right, yeah. lost her family home um, at the point that she was approached for the job role. What about that guy with pink hair? Hmm. Pardon? Oh, yeah, I don't what know. was his name? Kyle's. Uh, it didn't go into him too much on the Christopher personal Wiley, Christopher Wiley, former Cambridge Analytica employer, and he used a whistleblower. Interesting chap. Yeah, he could have very been... intelligent, I think, when it comes to the computing stuff. They didn't make her out to be in the documentary. I think they showed her in quite a bad light. Hmm. Oh, what Brittany Kaiser? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because she, she was probably the. the well, it doesn't even say that she's a whistleblower in it. it says that he was the main whistleblower. But he named her, didn't he? When they went yeah. into the courtroom and started asking him questions. Okay, so he was like the first one that came out. I think the whole thing is pretty mental. It just makes you lose faith, though, in politics, uh, politician, and uh, politicians, politics, and the whole. But they all they all do that. They all come out with the things that you still vote. Yeah, because if you don't, then you haven't got a say, have you? If you just if you say, "Well, I'm not voting anymore because they're never going to do what you say," and they get in, you go, "Well, then you've got an opinion." Well, but that was the problem, wasn't it? Especially in subjects such as Brexit. Yeah, loads of people didn't vote because all of those people that would remain, so many of them stayed at home and didn't bother because they're like, "There's no chance. There's yeah. no chance of Brexit." I would vote on that, and, and that's I... where the advertising had actually got in. Yeah, and got so many people that wanted Brexit because it had riled them up enough. To get out, that they actually went and voted aggressively for for that. Yeah, I fucking hate politics. I think it's becoming too extreme now as well. Like your left wing, right wing. Like you've got Corbyn. Oh yeah, absolute no Does hope. Anyone though. like him though? Um, Guys, got... actually, if you do like Corbyn, can you just send me a DM on Instagram at, at Sam Relish? I want to actually know mm. if you like Corbyn because I don't think I've actually met anyone that speaks highly of him. No, it's ridiculous. No. So he's running Labour into the ground. Um, then you've got Bernie Sanders. Who's, is he doing all right this year, actually? Um, um, obviously, he they sided with Hillary rather than Bernie last election, but he's like borderline socialist. And you've got Trump, who's like, who knows what he is. <laughs> well, he wants to and buy Greenland. <laughs> Theresa yeah. May was, uh, I guess, fairly central, wanted to do everything the right way, and she got nowhere. Yeah, literally nowhere. No. But if Cambridge Analytica was working with her, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. would she have got somewhere? Yeah, it's, it's hard for politics at the moment to come into the middle ground. Mm. Yeah. Which is when I think the, the country runs best. Yeah, we need we need best of both. Hogus have known that for a long time now. <laughs> oh dear, plug for Hogus. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Well, the advertising's got you. Whilst, whilst we're talking about plugs, I best make sure I plug um, Blue Mike, our Yeti casters. Thank you so much for our lovely four mics and uh, allowing us to spread the news on our podcast. So thank you very much. Probably do a plug for them at the very beginning of the uh, the thing just prior to. Yeah. Play. We'll get to make sure that they're covered. They are ledge. Yeah, they, they sorted are, it out nicely. They made this happen. They made it happen. They wouldn't have us here. They're great speakers. Okay, cool. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> they are. Uh, they're they're microphones, but it's fine. <laughs> Very friendly, this one. Yeah. Okay, guys. Are we done on the Cambridge Analytica discussion? Uh, I think so. Okay, cool. One final minute from each person. Where... Is politics going in, in in the next five years? Do you think? Okay, let's go this way. Do you think your future kids will be voting? Be voting? Do you think they'll be voting? Yeah. Do you think? Or do you think they? Yeah. Fuck it. 
<laughs> you know the Trinidad and Tobago thing that they mentioned in the um, the documentary as well. That that swung it by six percent purely because the a lot of the Indian um, families. That's right were uh, getting their children to vote they were basically saying like you need to go out and vote and they don't want to disappoint their parents and they're going out and voting but a, a lot yeah. of the african um uh community were not actively voting and they weren't encouraged to do so by their families so therefore it actually swung it by the six percent yeah. along with the marketing from cambridge analytica yeah good point boom based on boom. whether you vote or not yeah so that was a social thing that they managed to pick up using the data mining. Do you remember that security guard that uh, used to be at my old house? Yes. Irish guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when I left out when Brexit happened, he's like, I've done you a favour by voting out. <laughs> Fuck. He won't be here to see it, mate. He was angry. But that's what, that's the main point. <laughs> The main point is if you break down the fucking voters, half the people that voted fucking out will be dead in the next 15 years and you won't see it. You're going to rile a lot of people up with this podcast. It's great. Why? I'm not a Remainer or a Lever, man. I'm just a straight neutral down the middle, like the fucking speaker that's resigned. <laughs> or the fucking Bank of England carny. I, I, I don't think the speaker is neutral. But yeah. no, well, that's why they've gone. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. We'll be all right either way, yay or nay. But I mean, it's just a vote that should not have happened. Are you going to yeah. encourage people to vote in the future with the current political system? Or do you reckon it should change? I reckon that auditing thing would sort the whole thing out. Can't say that. Not factually true. You know what we need? We we need that fucking... We need Carl Pilkington. Fucking bu bullshit, man. That's what he wanted to be. <laughs> bullshit, man. That's, That's what he wanted to be. He was Superman. Yeah, uh, uh, he's like, wait, wait. I smell someone talking bullshit. Down to Flies the fucking house of corns. <laughs> you, sir, talking bullshit. You cannot carry on. Sits takes a seat. That's what you need. You need a bullshit, man. You don't need a house speaker anymore to be like, calm it, calm it, calm down. Genuinely, calm if he was order. there, he'd permanently be there <laughs> because none of them would be able to have, hold a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, son, you're talking bullshit. Stop, you're having bullshit. 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 <laughs> Just pointing around the room. But that, He'd be like... <laughs> bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> a tiny plaque with a stick. Bullshit. bullshit. It's so true, though. What People are listening to bullshit. Carl Pilkington... If you're listening, you are right. That is the best Superman that you need to, like, to be around a superhero, to rock up and just be like, bullshit. Would that solve, would that solve politics? That would be a pretty big good start. All right. that's, a, that's a great way to finish. You should run for politics, Sam. No. Oh, well, well, <laughs> well, well, well. Well, funny you should say that. Yeah, exactly. That. Funny you should say that because in my in my community, I've got a great chance of being able to get in under um, the Green Party. And I'm, I'm for the Green Party. If I look at politics of arguing left and right, I don't think they stand a chance at the moment with what's going on. The opinions are so strong. But if you look at the Green Party, they're putting actually the planet first yeah. over the people which is most important, which is the host of where we live. And that's what needs to go first. And so, yeah, there may be a journey there for me in politics, but I cannot see a gap with them having lack of power, lack of seats in, in, in Parliament to be able to make any real change that there that there is. Hence why I think running a charity is probably better than being a part of the Green Party because you can actually make the changes yourself. Yeah rather than going to debate those changes with someone that doesn't give a shit, that just wants to, you know, get political game. Mm. Interesting question. If Cambridge Analytica or similar company decided to go down the route of promoting the Green Party, do you think it would work? No. That was, uh, that was dramatically sudden. But bro, bro, your missus does like pots. And so <laughs> it, it depends <laughs> on the audience. But we've already established he's never going to buy a pot pot. So. Yes. I think no. I think they would. I think they would stand a chance to gain more seats. Yeah. Not get into power. But yeah. then again, if that was a gradual growth and Cambridge Analytica was working with them every single time, then yeah, I think they would gain more seats because how many more people are now conscious about single-use plastics? Um, you know, uh, A lot more of today's youth are. Sorry? A lot, a lot more of today's youth are aware of, well, essentially... Well, there's the predicted there's, impending doom. There's there's two hundred demonstrations today around the country, isn't there, to do with uh, changing say, the planet? There's one in Nairobi. I know about that. I mean, like they're making a stand in Nairobi, but we can't even do it here. 
mean, it's, I think I think the question the question is I'd have a completely different opinion if this was the Green Party that had the data that was collected and that was doing it because I but then that's I because I believe in the, the bettering of the planet. I don't believe in. But does that make it right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't it definitely doesn't make it right. Keep us alive. Area and opinion, isn't it? It's, yeah, it is. It's very interesting uh, thought though to think about that. But they won't have the budget. Green Party that's is right. small. That's they don't a, have the money. The problem. problem. This is why I need to be able to make, you know, five hundred million to then hire Cambridge. <laughs> to go. Good job, they're gone. Yeah, Emma though. To yeah, they literally yeah. push the planets. We need that. We need that. You know, David Attenborough. People are stopping listening to that hero. Why? He is an absolute legend. We need to listen to that man a lot more. I'm just scared. Who replaces David Attenborough when he's gone? In the space of looking out for the planet. David Amber is a hero. He has done so yeah, much stuff, absolutely. and he's been around a long time. He's had, a, you know, he's, he's getting on now. But who replaces him in that stand? There's that young sixteen-year-old girl, isn't there? Um, Greta, Greta, isn't it? What's that? Yes, is it Greta? Her. Yeah, who, I don't know her full name off the top of my head. Yeah, she did talking. like a, a. She was. I don't want to get going on a boat journey, wasn't she? Like she's doing. Yeah, on she a, uh, sailed across the uh, specific. Oh, yeah, um, Trump sent her off. Uh, Pacific, he? even. Yeah, oh. Pacific. Trying to say it correctly, and I say it wrong on purpose. Then they send it to the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Very mean. Yeah, and Trump re- refused to. Yeah, meet she spoke her. to Congress, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. So she's up and coming in that space. What what an amazing thing to be at such a young age, even younger age than when David Atter was there. And she's been managing a lot of protests outside um, uh, DC, outside the White House, I, mm. I think. And that's been pretty ent- entertaining to see that actually step up. She didn't expect so many people to be there. That's getting a lot of news coverage. The more I start looking into it, the more scary it gets with the whole climate change. That's We're supposed another. to be getting a really interesting guest coming onto the podcast as well. He's been traveling the, the Amazon uh, whilst the fires was going on for three months. So it'd be interesting to have an interesting discussion. Yeah, stay yeah. tuned on that one, guys. But is uh, social media helping her to get her presence forward? Yes. But is she using the data in the wrong way? No. No. She's using it based on word of mouth and spreading and sharing, whereas they were using it on pushing a million pound a day in advertisement. Yeah, absolutely. Another argument is, should you be able to request your data uh, like an opt-out option? Or Facebook and stuff like that. Hmm. 100%. Yeah. It's, it's mandatory. But you can't currently do that. Don't make a Facebook account. Exactly, yeah, again, you've got that whole argument, haven't you? Again, on emails, though, it's mandatory to have an unsubscribe button. It's like a freedom of information request. You can request your data, but you, um, like information of saying what data do you hold on me, but they haven't been um, able to provide it to anyone. But that's because the company and they went. refused to, didn't they? Yeah, and that's yeah. probably why it shut down. That's probably a real reason. Mm. Debate is now open. I just, yeah, I'm interested to see where people think the future of politics is going just because I think that it's changing so much over the years now. Mm. And the more that you see it, the more you become aware of what's actually going on, the more people actually look at that and go, what a joke. Mm. I don't think anyone watches um, a political debate on TV without laughing. No. And then one of them says a stupid joke to the other person and you said anything, really? I just get angry listening to them. And you're paying them. So many lies. You're paying them. Yeah, taxes. Anyway, that's the debate, guys. In the next podcast, we have an awesome guest coming on the show, who has built a massive business across Europe. I will say nothing further because I don't want to spoil it before it happens. But let's just say he's an awesome guest, and uh, we'll be discussing that slightly further. Guys, if you want to get involved with this debate on Cambridge Analytica, be sure to make um, an effort to go and watch The Great Hack. And then um, head over to my Instagram, at Samuel Leach, and um, let me know what your thoughts are, because I think it's an absolutely insane debate. It's all with high-profile people and making massive decisions to uh, the political future of countries um, around the world. And it's um, I don't think it's going anywhere. So one to watch, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast, everyone, James, Adrian, and Dale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A pleasure. We haven't actually decided what we're going to be debating in the next one. 
maybe we'll leave that as a surprise before we actually uh, um, announce it. But uh, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next episode. Oh, 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 oh,